Good morning and welcome on Palm Sunday here from Craig Ant Methodist Church. On Palm Sunday, we arrive at the gates of Jerusalem. We have arrived at our destination and prepared to enter the city of dreams. The question is, what will we find? On Palm Sunday, we would normally give out palm crosses. And the reason we do this is that we then pray that the palm crosses would be for us symbols of God our Father. May they be for us signs of Jesus' kingship, reminders of his cross and symbols of his victory over sin and death. Earlier on, I posted a reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, which was Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And now I'd just like to share with you a few thoughts on that wonderful passage. Our Lord's arrival into Jerusalem just five days before his crucifixion is one of the stories that is reported by all the gospel writers. Everyone remembers that day. It was a joyful and glorious day, a time of excitement, optimism, and renewed national pride for the Israelites. What begins with a handful of disciples offering their praise to God turns out and turns into a citywide celebration. 500 years earlier, Zechariah had announced that one day their king would arrive triumphant and victorious. And that prophecy had been indelibly etched on their minds. This glory-starved nation had, in effect, been waiting for just this occasion for half a millennium. They had been waiting for David's successor to come galloping into town to assume his throne. So when Jesus decides that it's time for the city's most anticipated parade, the people are more than ready to let the party begin. They line the streets, cheering widely and lifting their voices in song, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Their hope was that Jesus would launch a revolution against the Romans and release their holy city from pagan occupation. Still, if the truth be told, all of their loud hosannas couldn't hide the fact that Jesus is not quite what they expected him to be. Jesus doesn't fit the typical messianic profile of the people of Jerusalem. He doesn't fit it at all. And sure enough, within a week, the grand marshal of this parade will be met with the words, crucify him, instead of the shouts of, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So what are we to make of this wonderful parade this day? Well, we are on sure ground when we take the historic basis of the story, the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem as the church has taken it, to be a meaningful symbol of Jesus as King. We have a wealth of evidence far and wide, gathered through history and experience, as to Jesus' right to this kingship in the lives of individuals and in society. Jesus' right to kingship is also validated by the long line of people running down through the centuries. People who have taken him as master and saviour. People whose lives of ministry and love and witness directly to Christ's power and to change the human heart. Every year, new mountains of evidence comes available. It piles up, in fact, to show us that Jesus was everlastingly right in his reading of life. The most effective arguments for the truth of Christianity are not necessarily spun out in the brains of theologians, but by the events of contemporary history. At the end of the passage I quoted Mark, you find that wonderful verse at the end, and sometimes it's overlooked. In the last verse of the gospel reading, at the end of this incredible day, Jesus doesn't go and set up a command center from which he will lead an assault on the Romans. He leaves the city and goes to the suburb of Bethany. We assume to spend the night with his beloved friends, Mary, Martha and Lazarus. At the height of this triumph, all he wanted to do is to rest in that quiet, loving circle of friendship. 
We find ourselves almost being forced into that situation now with the procedures we have to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Do we take it as a time, as he did, to rest and to be quiet with friends and family? Jesus was not the kind of Messiah the people of Jerusalem were expecting. And yet they were right to greet him as king. Because even though his kingship would not be one of might, it was a kingship of mercy. He won't release the people from Roman occupation or even take revenge upon their enemies. He often something better than that. He offers redemption. The crowds on Palm Sunday may not have it quite right, but they were in target in this respect. A new power had come into the world, only it was the power of redemption rather than of revenge. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A meditation for Palm Sunday. One of the aspects of being with Jesus is you never quite know what's going to happen, said a disciple. Every day is different. And that can be both exciting and frightening, depending on your point of view. As time moved on, Jesus spoke more and more about death. How the Son of Man would be betrayed to the religious leaders who would sentence him to death. We didn't really understand back then what he meant or if we just buried our heads well and truly in the sand. It couldn't possibly happen. Not to Jesus, could it? So when we set off that day to fetch the colt, little did we realize that it was the beginning of the end. And had we, there was nothing we could have done to stop what was to become the inevitable The owner of the colt was a bit short with us at first. He came rushing out of his house, his face full of anger. Oi, what are you up to? But when we said the words, the master needs it, his face changed completely. And he was more than pleased for us to take the animal. We took it back to Jesus and the others, put some of our cloaks on it and helped Jesus to get on it. It couldn't have been very comfortable although Jesus didn't seem bothered, and we just continued our journey. As we neared the city, people must have known who Jesus was, because some of them spread their cloaks on the road and began to shout, praise God, praise him who comes in the name of the Lord. I don't know how Jesus was able to sit there, knowing that in a few days' time, some of those people who were shouting, praise God, would be shouting, crucify, crucify. It's amazing how fickle us humans can be, how we are swayed by the crowd. It was getting quite late by then, and by the time we had returned the colt and made our way to find Jesus and the others out at Bethany, it was almost dark, and we were ready for supper in our beds. I slept soundly that night. But I wonder how Jesus slept, knowing what the days ahead would bring. And just on this Palm Sunday, to bring you a prayer about faith in God's help and support. In our fear, Lord, be our confidence. In our weakness, be our strength. In our panic, be our calm. In our sickness, be our healing. In our confusion, be our anchor. In our insecurity, be our rock. In our darkness, be our light. In our grief, be our solace. In our despair, be our hope. In our storm, be our sunshine. In our night, be our day. Amen. And just a blessing on this Palm Sunday morning. Let us follow our Jesus, our King and our Saviour. Let us sing of his goodness and shout him our praise. Let us hold to him firmly. Recall how he suffered. Let us live his forgiveness and peace all our days. Amen. God bless and stay safe. Amen.